Well, hey, Dave Melinda here, Positive Polarity Podcast. Hope things are going awesome for you this week. I'm going to start this off by saying thanks to my producer, Dana, because she always tries to find people that need, that I need. And this week is no different. Uh, And as soon as you hear the question, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's totally what I need as well. So super excited this week. This question is kind of an awkward one um, because it's not rhetorical. It requires us to answer it. And the question is, have you ever started something and not finished it? And I'm like, man, Dana, thanks so much. You know all about me. And, you know, for a lot of entrepreneurs listening today, they're going, oh, crud, I jumped on the wrong podcast. But before you jump off, I just want to introduce you to a couple of guys that wrote a book about this. And we're going to unpack this today. So I'm honored to be hanging out with uh, Dr. Tracy Maylett, CEO of Decision Wise and Organizational Psychologist. How are you today, sir? Great. Thanks, Dave. Good to be here. Absolutely. That was a mouthful. Tim, yours is um, fun as well. Tim Vandehey is a writer and author, ghostwriter and author. And you guys wrote a book together called The Science. It's called Swipe, The Science Behind Why We Don't Finish What We Start. So thanks, Tim, for being here. And uh, thanks for yeah. all your writing skills and everything. I I wrote a book and I had a ghostwriter that did all the work. So it was like totally... Yeah, I totally get it, right? That's how it goes, Tracy. You have the ideas, and then Tim's got the good stuff, and together you guys uh, uh, form a really good team. So I I don't even have the ideas, Dave. It's all Tim. So Oh, man, (laughs) that's even better. So so why is Tracy's name on there? Why, Tim? Truth in in advertising, this was not a ghost written. Tracy wrote a fair amount of the content. We kind of split it up. So yeah. it was not something where, you know, Tracy slapped his name on it. This was a true collaboration. So just <laughs> just to be fair to everybody. Cool. Well, I'm honored to be hanging out with you guys again. I know for myself, I have a ton of half finished projects and um, full disclosure at the front end. You know, we do a lot of work with DISC, uh, the personality profile. And in my profile, it says I get bored easy. And so that's always what I've attributed it to. So I and and then as I was doing research, you guys started to de- debunk some of the things that I've been standing behind. So this is going to be for me. So anyone listening, it's just really for me. If you get anything, great. But the reality is, is I want to learn about this today. So tell me about your history. How did you guys meet? I, we love hearing the backstories on this. So um, for whatever legal you can share, um, that's not uh, going to, you know... <laughs> Hurt There's the whole witness person. protection thing yeah, again, right? Exactly. Worry right. About. I don't want to. I don't want to get yourselves in trouble. But I'm just curious. How did you guys? Um, what's the history, and how did you guys meet? Tim well, and I've actually um, been working together for what ten plus years. Tim, is that uh, right? Uh, yeah, eleven, I think. Right? Yeah. I think eleven years. Okay. We started and- out actually, Tim. Tim as a ghostwriter for some of the works that I was doing. We were focusing on this concept of why people engage or disengage in what they were doing, and. Um, Tim uh, worked with a very good friend of mine and um, I, he came very highly recommended outside of that as well. And so we worked together on a couple of books. This is our third book together. Tim Ghost wrote the first two with us. One was called um, Impula Experience and the other one was Magic, uh, Engagement Magic. And uh, we had some real successes on that one. And Tim and I are such opposites yet share, yet share common common values. And so it was just a pleasure to work with Tim. And on this last book, we just uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about the history behind it. But this last book, we said, you know, between the two of us, I think we have different views that that are interesting enough that we need to put this down in writing. So, Tim, that's the less than romantic side of this whole thing, the less than exciting <laughs> piece of this. Well, the origin story of so the origin story of how the book came about, what I call the radioactive spider bite of swipe was yeah. Tracy and I got together in uh, just around the, just r- really around the time COVID started to become a thing. Yeah. And we were talking about book number three, collaboration number three about sure. on, on employee engagement. And um, we came up with this idea based on the, uh, the, the question we were trying to answer was why do employees not engage? Yeah. Why do they yeah. choose to engage? And we came up with this idea related to technology, and we came up with this one word title, which one word titles are great, called Swipe. And we thought this is pretty cool for about you know kind of a kind of a a a metaphorical structure for why we're so easily distracted. 
And the more we thought about it, the more we thought, no, wait a minute, this is this is bigger than just a business book. This is about not finishing what we start, which affects pretty much everybody. Right. And so the what was originally going to be part three of sort of a trilogy of business books became an everybody book, which is what Swipe really is. And of That's course, awesome. it took three years to sort of take shape and get written and and uh, with all all the life that tended to intrude between 2020 and 2022, sure. uh, all the stuff that was going on in the world. So, but eventually, obviously, and, you know, we, we got it out this year. So. Well, that's awesome. And I think, thank you for making me feel better and including me in a bigger group of people that don't get things done because like, I just, you know, there's like a one side of me that I make lists and then I cross things off the list and I'm so bad on the list. Like I put stuff that I've already done on the list just so I can cross it out. Right. So I feel better about myself. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I love that. But yet there's all the, you know, the, so just for myself, I have these little things that are easy to get at, but boy, these bigger pieces, these is some of them would be more large course corrections in life. Um, some larger chunks. I mean, to start off with, is it is this applicable for people, small lists and small things on a day-to-day basis, as well as big fundamental life shifts? Does this research tend to be for both of those types of people? Yeah, you know, that it's what's interesting about this one is that we're we're all actually pretty good. We I do the same thing. You put the things on the list that I've already accomplished. So I get that little endorphin rush in there. Makes me feel good about myself. The thing of it is, is this is the smaller pieces where actually most of us are pretty good when we get those lists done, the little small list, the things that we mm-hmm. can check off easily. That's not usually a problem. The sure. problem comes when we have these major life goals that uh, really make us want to, we have to, we have to give ourselves to this. Let, let's talk a little bit. I'll define the, the concept of engagement here because it's important yeah. to understand. Engagement is when we, we we're willing to bring our hearts, our spirits, our minds and our hands to what we do. So the hearts and the spirit, the heart is the, the love that we have for whatever's in front of us. It could be a love for a hobby that we may have a passion, a love for our family, a love for your career, a love for your podcast. Uh, the next piece is the spirits piece. You know, you walk into a into a, a sporting event or a team, and you can immediately tell whether or not there's a, a team spirit that exists there. You feel something that's there. So that excitement that exists, do I do I maintain that excitement for what I have? The other two pieces are the doing pieces, which are the the minds and the hands. Do I think about this? Am I is it going through my mind? Am I you know am I running through you know what is my next? Who is my next guest? What am I going to talk about? Um, and then also the, the, the hands piece, the actual physical making it happen. So when we talk about checkoff lists, those checkoff lists, you don't have to be actively engaged. You just have to knock it out and get it done. Sure. That's why we're all so good at that. But when we have to engage and, and bring those other pieces to what we do, it tends to be a lot bigger. And that's really what this book's written about is what about those big things that are important to us that we re- once engaged in for some reason. Uh, gotcha. We engaged in this relationship. We engaged in this job. We engaged in this hobby. What caused us to do that? And how do we get that back? And how do we we bring that to fruition? Wow. Well, and I think about, so like right off the top of my head, I think about something like maybe I want to jump out of a plane or maybe I want to become a pilot or maybe I want to learn how to sail or, you know, these larger things, or maybe I want to grow a business, buy a business, you know, these larger things like you're talking about, Tracy, are, you know, those are things seemingly really hard to, to um, tackle. And so like, for me, I just kind of sit around the peripheral for a little bit, and I might Google how to fly, or I might, you know, I might do some very non- um aggressive things not you know not doesn't require a lot of action and and then all of a sudden because i remember like for once i I wanted to raise bees and i really like honey and i'm like man this is going to be awesome right how hard can this be (laughs) my first thought is as soon as that comes up i'm already know i'm in trouble right so i watched this 22 minute video on bees and i'm like at the end of that video i was like oh my gosh this is so complicated there's so much here i will never raise bees i'll gladly just go to the store and buy honey um, so that one came off my list quick, but I mean, are, do, do you find a lot of people are kind of just stuck in, they get halfway through 
And then for whatever reason, they jump into their next project or do they get, is that kind of how you're seeing that, Tim? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's really the core of the dynamic of what we call the swipe. So the, so the swipe is what we call that, that sort of reflexive hitting of the eject button. You know, okay. when you're, when you're partway through something that you want to try to achieve and you just get frustrated or embarrassed or um, disillusioned and you say, forget it, I'm going to go on to something else, or I'm just going to abandon this is, you know, really there are two, see what you did with the beekeeping thing, which yeah. I don't know about that, by the way, what you yeah. did was smart because you did research and a lot what, what we found is there's a twofold, uh, there are two big issues with people who, um, who swipe away from things they really want, which by the way, that's, you know, that's what, that's what, uh, what really um, distinguishes the, the, uh, the goals that we're talking about from the list making, which is, okay. The kind of engagement we're talking about is these are things that, for the most part, people really want to do. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, picking up milk at the store. It's not getting your hair cut. It's these are things that people aspire to sometimes for decades, and yet they can't quite get to the finish line. So that's, you know, that's a personal tragedy in some ways. So these are, so why can't we do these things that we say, I really want to, I, you know, I was approaching from a standpoint of writing because I'm a writer, Well, I really want to get to write that novel, or I really want to, really want to finish building that boat, or I really want yeah. to lose weight. So you know, there's two parts to it. One is faulty expectations. And the other one is faulty motivation, right? So you took care of the expectations part, which was smart. That's not swiping. That's that's intelligent. That's I'm going to check out and see what's involved here rather than jumping into it and say, "Holy God, this is this is way too complicated for me. I'm I, I'm not going to do this." Most people who swipe, they don't do that. They jump into something because they, you know, out of a sincere and deep desire to try it. Yeah. And then they find they're in, they're in over their heads. Um, you know, with working out with whatever it is. Um, they find there was so as as with most things, there's so much more to it. It's harder. It's more complex. It's more expensive. It's more time consuming. Um, and the other part is motivation. You know, why did you want to do this? Well, I mean, I thought I, I had a I have a friend here in Kansas City I talked to about a year ago. He blew my mind one day when he said, "Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna quit my job, and so I can become a screenwriter." And this guy is a few years younger than me. I'm 58. So this guy's in his early 50s, has never written a thing before in his entire life, has a great job in finance and wanted to quit to become a screenwriter. I said, mm -hmm. I said, Brian, why? What, huh? Why, why would you do that? Yeah. I've always wanted to do it. Yeah, but that's not reason enough to throw away a career yeah. over something you know nothing about. And I would just it was I guess I mean, I, I hate to chalk it up to a midlife crisis, but it's hard to avoid that there's some midlife crisis stagnation aspect to that. So sure. his motivation was um, completely unclear, to, certainly to me, and it's, I think to him. I don't know if he tried it. I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, but, you know, when those two, when when neither of those things is there, follow, you know, proper expectations, proper motivation, um, people are really at risk of of hitting the eject button on what they try to do. And if both of them are bad, expectations are wrong, motivations are wrong, then it's almost a guarantee that people are going to disengage from what they want to do and halfway through and try and move on to something else. Sure. And if you take that into the office setting, into your business, I mean, I'm, a, I'm guessing you guys run into a lot of people that have these grandiose plans for their business um, business growth or acquisition or new markets, new products, whatever, right? I mean, how do how does that, I mean, how do you t tame somebody down whose personality is just like go, 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 acquire? Or do you just, I mean, what do you do with that person that's way out of control in that situation? I appreciate the way you said out of control there, because I certainly don't want to to squelch someone's motivation who, who the classic entrepreneur is go, go, go. And right. Yep. He or she is about, let's find the next opportunity and move forward. We don't want to squelch that at all. What we want to do is say, okay, first of all, with your, with your beekeeping, for example, by the way, Tim, weren't you looking for a new atheist? And I think we did not find him, I, I guess. I yes. was. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Back anyway. So Dave, as we, as we go through this, we need to understand that expectations 
first of all, are part of the key to this, as Tim mentioned a little bit earlier, are those expectations realistic? Yeah. Um, somebody who swipes is somebody who, who does not have those realist, realistic expectations. They move from, from point to point without doing the research behind it. So when we look at the reason behind the swipe, if you, if you can picture your mind, and this comes from the research of uh, Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Uh, Daniel Kahneman, the idea that our brains are actually two, two systems. Our mind is two systems. One of those systems is based on, on reflex, system, system one. And system one really is about making that immediate decision. We don't have to stop and think about it. In fact, our brain doesn't do that. We rely on system one all throughout our, our day. You know, it's, do I turn left here? Do I turn right here? I get to work without even knowing how I got there. That's system one that takes over. System two is the one that says, no, let's stop and think this one through. It requires some real mental horsepower to make it happen. So the thing of it is, is, and the basis behind swipe, and the, the term isn't just a, a, about, you know, moving to the next thing. It is, is technology has got us to this, this point to where when something becomes uncomfortable, our reflex takes over. Our reflex often moves to the next thing. It, we swipe to the next screen. We swipe to the next job. We swipe to the next project. And what we're saying here is no, stop for just a moment and let system two do some real serious thinking here. Think it through. Let's decide, you know, where's the emotion here? What is the motivation? Why am I doing this? Why do I want to not raise those bees? Are there other things that I want to do instead of this? Rather than making that very reflexive action, taking a reflex, move it to system two. Let, let's, let's let a more, more logical, um, more thought uh, process take over here. And so that's kind of the idea behind this. Um, we don't want to squelch the, the excitement of that new entrepreneur. What sure. we want to do is make her stop and think, is this the right thing to be doing rather than just swiping and moving to the next project? Well, and I think about out of control because I've worked with people that literally have so many ideas, yeah. right? And, and and it's not bad. Ideas aren't bad. Um, the, real, the reality is, is that if you don't finish the one, how do you go to the next one? You know, and I don't know what finish means. So I think I was going to ask you guys uh, because I, when I saw that, you know, have you ever started something and not finished it? You know, it's like, I think of like, I only cut half the grass or, you know, I only watered half the garden or something like that. That doesn't make sense, but I'm sure there's things that, you know, I'm kind of finished, <laughs> you know, I'm partway finished. I mean, is finished like an all or nothing? I'm just curious what you guys, how you define finished for this. It's really, it's really a great question because we don't get off often ask that. It's a key point of what this is. Um, really, the idea is as you start to be able to define what that finish is. We, uh, Tim, Tim, would you mind talking about tapping out here in just a second? Because I think that's a key piece of this. There's yeah. a point when you just say, I've done what I need to do here. I am yeah. finished with what I've yeah. tried to do. That's not a swipe. That's, okay. I've decided to move on for another different, for a, a different reason. Yeah, that's what that's that's an important distinction to make. And I'll come back. I, I want to talk about the serial entrepreneur thing here in a minute, because I think sure. that's a part of this, too. And it's an, and it's an area that we, have, we haven't covered that much. Um, but Tracy mentioned tapping out. So we've gotten a lot of that, uh, a lot of uh, questions about the difference between, um, you know, when is a when is a swipe, not a swipe. And tapping out is when you make a conscious decision to disengage from something. A swipe is reflexive. A swipe is panic button, um, without thought, um, I don't wanna do this anymore, um, or I'm not getting the results I want, or I'm disillusioned or embarrassed, and it's, it's I'm gonna bail out, bail out of the boat. Um, tapping out is, the, the example I like to use is Simone Biles, the gymnast. Um, back in, I believe it was 2000, I think it was 2000, she um, chose to withdraw from the women's uh, uh, team gymnastics gold, team, team, gymnastics, team gymnastics competition at the Olympics, because she was having what was called the twisties, which is a, a loss of her ability to perceive her position in space, which, you know, mm -hmm. for a gymnast can be very dangerous. Sure. And she walked away. And she was rightly praised for taking, putting her own physical and mental health first. That is a tap out. That is not a swipe. That is making an affirmative decision for your own benefit to say, this is not a good situation for me. I'm going to walk away. Or in the case of maybe an entrepreneur, I've achieved everything I want to. 
Maybe, you know, because a lot, let's face it, a lot of the time, the things we're doing don't have a defined finish line. Right. If you're writing a novel, you have the end. Right. Yep. You're done. I mean, in theory, you're done. Some of us revise forever. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're uh, improve, trying to improve your fitness, for instance, you don't ever hit it's a point where you say, well, I'm as fit as I want to be. I'm going to go back to eating Taco Bell. Right. Um, you know, but you do reach a point where you say, okay, I've achieved my goal here. Now, maybe it's time to set a new goal in that same vein. I've lost the weight. Now I'm going to focus on building muscle or something like that. Or I've So sometimes, sometimes it is a matter of I have achieved everything that I wanted to achieve when I first set this goal. And now it's time to move on to another goal or recalibrate the same goal. That makes perfect sense for a business. Sure. The, the, the entrepreneur question is important because, you know, for ser- for people who we've all known serial entrepreneurs and we've all known serial entrepreneurs who, who threw multiple things at the wall at the same time, all the time to see what stuck. They might be starting a business over here and have an established business over here and be floating an idea over here and be pitching venture capital over here on something right. something else entirely. And those people are fairly unusual in the world of the swipe because their whole purpose, really, their whole model is to say, let's throw up, a, let's send up a bunch of trial balloons and yeah. see what see what catches fire, see what I still care about in six months. They're an unusual breed. Um, because they're one of the few groups of people for whom swiping is, I I wouldn't call it a business model, but I would call it, it's a, it's a kind of an accepted way of doing things where I know some of these things I start are not going to finish, but that process is going to tell me what I really should be pursuing. Sure. So in that sense, that's, that might be the one group that's more, amenable to this phenomenon where it's not necessarily a negative because they're sort of kept, they're sort of built that way. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, we're going to take a quick break and I got something for you when you get back. Okay. So here's my thought. So I think about if I wanted to be a commercial pilot, okay. And that was my goal. And if I tapped out or I don't want to use that word because I don't want to influence that. If I decided to stop at just get, you know, I got my um, my uh, VFR, I got my IFR, let's say I even got my twin engine, but I didn't get that commercial. I didn't make that last jump. And I just made a conscious decision to stop there. To me, that's different than a plan half built or something that is never, you know, never got off the ground or a room that never got cleaned or the house that never got painted. To me, there's two different things there. Is that kind of what you're saying, Tim, in that situation? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 all the, the one of the big differences between swiping and tapping out is that swiping almost always is accompanied by regret. Okay. That's one of the key, um, the key uh, indicators that you have swiped from wow. something is we do it because we do it because we get un- we become uncomfortable, right? As Tracy said, technology has conditioned us because of phones and tablets and things to to feel like we can change our reality uh, on demand, and then when we do, first we feel oh, phew, we feel a bit of quick relief because now we're not subject to, subject to that discomfort anymore. But then inevitably, God, I wish I'd stuck with that. We always feel that. I wish I'd stuck to my workout plan. If I'd stuck to my workout plan three for the last three months, I'd be in great shape by now. We do it all the time. Right. We feel regret. A tap out is almost never accompanied, followed by regret. A tap out is affirmative. It's positive. It's I made a choice for myself. I achieved something or I walked away, I either, I either achieved something and decided this is enough. This is all I need right now. I'm happy with where I am, or this was not a good situation for me and I'm going to walk away for my own benefit. So it's not accompanied by regret. Usually it's accompanied by positive feelings, both from you and the people around you who say that it's good, good that you walked away from that bad relationship or wow, you, you got your, you got, you got your I, VFR and IFR and IFR. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, you can fly a small plane now. Right. You know, so yeah, there's a very that's one of the biggest differences is regret versus no regret. Well, and I think that's really clarifying for me. Thank you, because 
you know, that regret piece is really important for us because, yeah, if I, I don't know why I can't be thankful that I did get that far in the pilot's license example, right? Why do we always you know, not appreciate what we got, but we are kind of like disappointed in what we didn't get. I mean, to me, that feels like a mindset thing, Tracy. And and that's, is that pretty common that people are just always looking at what they don't have or didn't get or didn't accomplish? Is is that kind of coming into play here? Yeah, I think so. That's a big piece of this. Um, swipe is is almost always accompanied by regret. It is, I didn't accomplish something. I regret that. It was something that was important to me. Now, for some reason, I didn't do it. Um, at a certain point, obtaining that license was important to you, but then you also made a conscious decision that said, but, and it's the but that's really important, but yeah. there are other pieces that are here that are more important. That is truly the tapping out. That's being able to say, there are reasons why I've chosen, keep in mind that the word there, chosen not to do this versus reacted in not doing this. It's not because it's uncomfortable. It's not because of embarrassment. It's not because of one of these other reasons why we swipe. It's because truly I've made another choice of something that's more important for me. And to be able to, to relish that, to be able to, to bask in that saying, I chose not to do this, but look at all this other stuff that I accomplished. And here's the reason I chose not to do that, to be able to do that. But swipe doesn't allow you to do that. It's not a choice. You don't think it through. Right. And I mean, and Tracy, you know, there's also, I mean, you, this is your field, so you may know the research. I'm, I'm going to cite it, but I don't know the source. There's also that, it's pretty, the research pretty extensively that shows that, uh, and it's primarily related to gambling, I think, but that losses um, are more, we, 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 we suffer more pain from losses than we do pleasure from wins. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that feels like that's part of that dynamic, which is we, it hurts more to fail or to lose, then it, then it gives us pleasure to be victorious. <laughs> wow. Well, so like on my disc assessment, it says like my competitiveness is at a hundred out of a hundred. So I'm at, you know, so I play a lot of racquetball in the mornings and I'm there for one reason. I mean, some of these guys might be there to hang out, to get away from their wife or just get exercise. I mean, I'm there for one reason and that's to win, right? right. And so if I, when I win five out of six games, I, I'm still analyzing that one game that I didn't win. And it's like, man, like you just said, Tim, why can't we bask in our five that we won why are we so you know intent on looking at that last one now there can be some healthy things there i think of looking at improvement for next time but hopefully <clears throat> not living there and that's what i struggle with i struggle with i live in that spot at times and it's just like wow and i just didn't know if that's common um, for people to really hone in and and almost over analyze their losses, whatever their losses mean in business and life, whatever, um, and not again enjoy the the success. It, it, I'm, I'd love to hear more about that research, Tracy. That uh, you know Tim was talking about. If you are aware of that, yeah, I can mm -hmm. talk to you a little bit about that. The whole concept of um, we tend to appreciate the things that that we have accomplished, but not to the degree of the things that we've lost. So this is one of the things about the swipe also. When we look back, we look about what we've lost in this entire process. Swiping is, a, is about, I, I'm not making a conscious decision here. So when what you're talking about is you're, you're thinking this through, Dave. You're thinking, you know, I won five out of the six. Um, that's not going to cause you to quit playing racquetball because of that. That's the difference here. When you look back and you regret the things that you've done or not accomplished, and it causes you to quit on something that's very important to you, gotcha. that's when the swipe takes place. And that's when we become dangerous. You know, you, you have kind of a selfie. Uh, I'm not going to play a uh, psychologist here with you on the couch, but Dave, you have kind of a, a healthy obsession here that may turn into a, an unhealthy obsession with the winning piece of this. It's a good yep. thing. It keeps you going. Um, don't, don't squelch that. It's wonderful. The moment you say, start giving up and you say, this is too hard. I'm never going to do it. Then all of a sudden you're swiping. You're not making a conscious choice. Gotcha. Right. Well, the nature and the thing is the nature of the of real swiping is there. It's cyclical and there's a certain degree of, I don't, I, I'm not even sure it's benign self-delusion. It's just pure self-delusion sure. because 
you know, the, the nature of the swipe is repetitive. People, when you're talking about a true swipe, not what you're talking about, you know, giving your, you know, beating yourself up for the one game you've lost. That goes back to that, that research. It was actually focused on gaming, on gambling, that losses hurt uh, sure. like six times more than wins give pleasure. But, you know, the, the, the kind of thing we wrote about was really, and again, it goes, you can, you can talk about writing, you can talk about, it's almost always people chasing after a goal that they've cherished for years and held up as something, you know, put on a pedestal. I, I really want to do this. And you try it, faulty expectations, faulty motivations, somewhere along the line, you stop, you feel regret at some point, inevitably you circle back after the pain has faded and that's where the self-delusion kicks in. This time I'll do it. This yeah. time I'll be successful. But nothing, fun the fundamentals haven't changed. You still aren't changing your expectations or your motivations. So you just repeat the process, which is why this is so maddening for so many people. I mean, I'm, you know, I live in the world of writing and writers. I have since 1995, really, when I first went freelance. And I probably know 75, 80 really good writers who either continue to struggle to finish a, a book, a book length work, fiction or not, or just finished one, you know, or finished one after 15 years sure. of repeated beating their head against the wall and feeling terrible and so on. Yeah. And, you know, it was because they kept, they, they got stuck in that cycle of thinking this time it'll be different. Well, but they don't ask, ask the question of why will it be different? What are you going to do to make it different? Because otherwise you're just going to write up running into the same wall over and over again. That's the cycle that we have, that we wrote about and that we see, and that eventually, if not broken, leads to fatalism really, which is of course, I'm never going to do this. Sure. Is that fatalism? I'm never going to get in shape. I'm never going to be a real writer, whatever the, whatever the, the goal is. I'm never going to get my business off the ground. Um, that's the danger of the swipe. Yeah. It sure seems like using the word always and never are really dangerous words. Yeah. Just like in relationships, right? You I always mean, do this. That's a I'm recipe. I've that with life. my wife and I'm like, yeah. man, you know, to say she always or for oh, her to say never. Terrible. I mean, right. Yeah. It, yeah. I've learned never to use that word. Yeah, but yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> always and never. Uh, yeah. It's, well, you're, you're, then you're, then you're making it about absolutes. Yeah. And it's not about absolute. One, one of the one of the most empowering pieces of this whole book of this book and this idea when we've talked to people about it has been their realization that we've helped them see that this is predictable and it's yeah. controllable. It's changeable. It's not something that just came out of nowhere. You know, it's something you can actually affect. Wow. And that's huge. Well, and that's what I liked about the research that I did with you guys is that excuses really didn't hold up very well in in what i read from you you know trying to blame other people you know it's so easy in today's world right to blame the government to blame the weather to blame the competition i mean you can blame whatever you want and it makes you feel good for a second or two but then you kind of got to come back to the realization that it's still me you know um and so i just wanted to say thank you for that because again in a world where it's never my fault um i don't know and again i i don't get much into politics but i don't know of a president that ever admitted he did something wrong <laughs> you know and it's just like oh my gosh the guy is human yeah. man just like us and it's like come on seriously so you know we, uh, we talked about starting to write this book as an employee we're trying to understand why employees are disengaging you know the yeah. great resignation is what really brought on this book what's happening right. here and the thing we found is those employees you know you look at them and and by the way, the average tenure of somebody who has just quit their job in the new job, you know, there's as many as one third to one half of those individuals that will quit that next job within the next six months. Sure. So you have to look at the theme here that says, what's the common theme? And it goes back to the quote that we absolutely love and put it in the book a couple of times, which is wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. The issue here is not the job. The issue here is not my spouse. The issue is not the the, the racquetball uh, court, it's not whatever. It's the issue is you. You're the common factor here. So take some ownership for that. Yeah. And, and I don't know. Why is that so hard? I mean, really, why is that so hard for us as humans to do that? Because it's easy for me to blame my partner. 
It's easy to, for me to blame the guy standing in front of me. I mean, man, I'm just like the master at coming up with excuses. And then it's weird because I go from that to then I go, I suck. You know, so that's fighting my brain, too. And it's just like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's supposed to be fun. Don't go if this is how it's going to be. You know, it turns out to be such a battle. And um, but I love that wherever you go, you are right. That's what you said. Wherever you go, you are. There you are. There you are. Part of this is our basic human instinct is self-preservation. So that's the first thing we have to keep in mind. We have to keep living. We have to keep breathing. We have to maintain that self-identity. And when whenever we can blame what happened on somebody else, we're able to maintain that self-identity. We're able to maintain, we are okay. It's the environment that's not okay. And that's just basic human nature. Yeah. Wow. That's really powerful. And so hopefully for you listening, if you are in the habit of blaming other people, you know, just own it, accept it, and then start thinking about how you can actually make that transition into that thought of wherever you go, there you are. And, you know, I, I really want to, as we start to land the plane today, no pun intended, I really want to um, kind of talk to the person that's listening right now that's like standing in front of something that they want to quit. Um, they they want to, you know, swipe, They they just want to you know, give up for whatever reason, what encouragement would you guys have for that person right now that's listening, that's just seeing something, whether it's insurmountable, whether they don't feel they have the energy, whatever it is, but there's there's somebody listening right now that is right at that precipice. What what, what encouragement do you guys have for that guy or girl? Well, I think there are kind of three three pieces of, of advice. We get asked this a lot as you might imagine. Um, And, you know, and the key thing about this is it doesn't necessarily have to occur at the beginning of the process. You did your beekeeping research before you ever, you know, to see, do I want to even attempt this? And that was, like I said, that was smart um, because your expect, it set expectations that were like, dang, this is a lot more than I thought it would be. I'm not going to dig into this. Now you might do it in the future when you're feeling ready, but you know, at least your ex, your expectations are realistic, but you can also do this in the middle of the process. If you're, what's great about it is let's say you're halfway through, uh, you know, training for a marathon. And you're like, man, this is so much harder than I thought. And you're thinking of swiping. I'm just saying, forget it. I'm done. And throwing away all those months and months of work. You can stop in the middle of the process and sort of get a reboot by doing really three things. Number one is looking at those expectations. You know, the where where expectations come into play are two two things really are expectations about the results you're going to get and expectations about the experience you're going to have. Um, you know, I related to fitness, I think is a you know provides a great example. If you start a fitness program and you think, well, in, a, in one month I'm going to be jacked. You know, after a month, you might have made some nice progress, but you're not going to be jacked. And you're going to be disappointed. And you're going to and you're going to quit thinking, well, that program was a big lie. No, yep. your expectations tripped you up. So are your expectations realistic about how hard this is going to be? And that's not negative. Most sure. things worth doing are hard, uh, especially if you've never done them before. So check your expectations for what kind of results are you going to get? So how fast are you going to write, be able to write that novel? Are you going to write 10,000 words a day? No. If you write a thousand, you'll be doing well. Um, And what are your results going to be? And what's your experience going to be like? Is this, how hard is this going to be? How tiring is this going to be? Second part is, number two is check your motivation. A lot of people that we talk to get into things just because, well, that sounds kind of fun. I'm going to try that. Nothing wrong with that. But if you, if, if what you're doing is complex, beekeeping, building a sailboat, which is one of my big long-term goals, building a wooden boat by hand. I would never do that without getting expert advice and instruction and because otherwise I'd be setting myself up for a lot of frustration and failure. But why? Why do, I, why do you want to do this thing? Are you, do, do you want to do it because, um, because you've just because you've always wanted to do it or because your parents wanted you to do it or because you, everybody else is doing it? You want to be one of the cool kids? What's your motivation? Is your motivation valid? And is it strong enough to sustain you over the bumps? And, you know, we, we talk about the stages of the, the stages of experience we call the downhill, you know, the downhill is the beginning. It's all easy because it's new. Then yeah. you hit that, then you hit that, that point at the bottom of the hill and you start going uphill and you go, whoa, this is work. 
this is hard. And that's when people start to think about swiping. Your motivation has to get you to the top of that next hill. Sure. And it's not there, either find it or say, maybe not the right time for this. I'm going to step back and do some self-exploration to figure out, you know, what do I want to do? You can do something adjacent to it. The third part is really simple. Be kind to yourself. Um, there's a lot of self cruelty is not too strong a word. I don't think around this issue of not finishing things. We are very intolerant. We shame ourselves. We beat, we berate ourselves. We really beat up for failing to achieve what we set out to achieve, even if it's over and over again. The point where the point we've tried to make with the book is this is an understandable process. It's also part of how our brains are wired. We're wired for distraction. And so we need to be kinder to ourselves and give ourselves a little bit of a break sure. and not be so mean to ourselves. When we don't finish things knowing that there are ways to, to address it, but, you know, being cruel to ourselves, being fatalistic, I'll never, um, I'll always, it's always and never, no, always and never language, you know, unless you're, unless you're saying I'm never going to quit till I reach my goal. That's okay. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's awesome. So expectations, motivation and be kind to yourself. I love giving get out of jail free cards for people, mm -hmm. right? And I'm it's harder to give myself a get out of jail free card than it is to give somebody else. So thank you for those good reminders. I'm glad you didn't say just be kind because that would have been not, I wouldn't have included myself in that be kind. I would have been kind to other people. So thanks, thanks for sharing that, Tim. Um, weirdly enough, though, in Kansas City, I'm not aware of any ocean or water. Where are you going to take? Where's this boat going to be ending well, up? Uh, that's that's uh, that's a different goal. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, grew, I grew up in Southern different California. Podcast, so. Different podcast. Yeah, right. I, I grew up in Southern California, so I'll, uh, I'll 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 migrate at some point. We have a house in San Diego. Which part? Of, where we're, we're in Southern California? Uh, Orange County. Oh, nice. Awesome. Cool. Well, hey, one last question, um, Tracy, and then I want to I want to wind this down for you guys to get back to helping the world. Um, what would your tip of the day be, you know, for somebody that's listening? Um, it could be something we've covered already. Maybe it's something on your heart that you haven't shared yet. But is there anything uh, like for people that are just like, man, where do I start or what's a simple thing I can do? Um, what, what's your suggestion for that tip of the day? There's a piece that we write about in the book. It's from an awful Adam Sandler movie. Don't go see the movie, but the movie is click. And uh, the reason you don't need to see the movie is because it's uh, very predictable, but it, it's kind of interesting. The, the premise behind this is that Adam Sandler finds this remote control. The magic remote control allows him to fast forward past those difficult times in his life. Oh. Um, he fast forwards past the time when his father has cancer. And I don't feel like I'm giving away the whole plot here because there isn't a plot. But the idea here is he fast forward past these things that are so important that are difficult in his life. Then he gets to the end of his life or he sees his daughter getting married and realizes he doesn't really know his daughter. He's fast forwarded past those pieces that are hard um, sure. that made him who he could have been or should have been or that sure. relationship. So the tip of the day is this. Uh, psychologists call it play it through to the end. Play it through to the end. And what that is, is if I make this take this action, what will the end result look like in whatever time period that is? And um, many times that what makes us who we are, are, those difficult experiences that we go through. And to deny yourself of those opportunities is to deny, your, deny yourself that opportunity to grow. Whether that's in the work environment, maybe I run across a bad product or a bad project or a bad boss or something. It's temporary. Sure. Is that really worth something to swipe about? Is this uh, really worth uh, changing that relationship for? Or do I, do I put up with this difficult time and grow from this opportunity? So take those opportunities to grow. Um, swiping doesn't give you that. It takes those opportunities from you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Play it through to the end. How cool is that? So um, if people want to learn more about you guys, learn more about your book, um, you know, get a deeper dive into this topic what's the best way for people to connect with you guys well the book's on amazon okay. um, as you might imagine and we have our website for the for the book is uh swipe the book.com and we're both on linkedin so if they want to personally connect that's a, linkedin's a great way to do it and want to learn more about the book 
uh, swipe the book.com is, uh, is a good way to do it. Awesome. What, uh, I'm gonna, I lied. I got one more question. What's on, what's next on your agenda for you guys? Any, any more stuff coming down the road that you can share? Jim and I have played through that one quite a bit. Yeah. We? Yeah. We're, we're, we're tossing around some ideas We're we're, there's still, we figure there's still a lot of uh, life in this book. So we're going to, we're going to be working to, you know, spread them, spread the gospel of this one first, but we've got a couple of ideas for follow-up books. I don't see that happening. That won't be happening this year. That's for sure. You know, <laughs> next year we'll talk. <laughs> that, that's cool. the reasonable expectation piece. You know, yeah. Dave, what you said at the very first, we get a lot of that, that people are saying, oh, uh, yeah, I don't finish what I start. That's about me. And so there is a lot of, or it, a lot of leg in this book still that we can, they can take forward. That's awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you. My, my listeners, thank you. Again, if you want, uh, jump on swipethebook.com and pick up a copy there uh, and, and find some ways to work through those expectations, the motivations and um, I'll end with the best one is to be kind to yourself today. So um, thank you guys so much for uh, all that you're doing. And I can't wait to keep learning from you. Thanks, Dave. A pleasure. Dave, it was a pleasure. Thank you.